Hi, I'm Professor Marlouis Peters and I'm an expert in sensors. So today I'm going to talk about the test that a lot of people use in order to monitor their blood sugar levels. The most common method is still using a glucose meter combined with a test strip. What you do then, you have a small device, so it's called a lancet device. You use it on the tip of your finger, you pull out a little bit of blood and then very rapidly, within seconds, you can measure your blood glucose levels. So this test can only measure these blood sugar levels at one moment in time. So it means that if you have to measure it throughout the day, you have to do it multiple times. But the big advantage of this test is extremely rapid and it works with very low cost technology, so it's very accessible. So nowadays there are other methods for continuous glucose monitoring as well. And this is possible because we work with non-invasive technology. And in this case, this is mainly based on interstitial fluid, which is the fluid just below the skin. But if you want to know more about that, you can have a look at this other video. My focus of today will be on how we can use these enzymatic assays for electrochemical detection of blood glucose, with these little strips that you probably will have seen at some point. So enzymes are biocatalysts. So these are biological molecules that can make sure that you catalyze a reaction. What that means is you can go to reaction a lot faster by reducing the energy that you need to activate it. So without the enzyme, the reaction wouldn't proceed at all. But because of the presence of this, this will go really fast. There are a couple of enzymes that are very specific towards glucose, and particularly D-glucose, because D-glucose is what naturally occurs in your blood. So that means that the interference of other compounds in your blood is minimal, because this enzyme very specifically only recognizes this molecule. And what's unique about glucose is that it's a reducing sugar. A reducing sugar means that the compound can be oxidized. And oxidized means that there's a loss of electrons. So glucose oxidase as an enzyme is easy to obtain, it's cheap, but what's particularly important here is that it can work within a variety of conditions, for instance in pH and temperature, so that means that it can be used widely and you don't need very stringent storage conditions. But actually the first biosensor to measure glucose based on this glucose oxidase was already proposed in 1962 um, by Clark and Lyons at the Children's Hospital in Cincinnati. So while the sensor is actually no longer used to measure glucose, it's still very popular and the Clark's electrode is used all over the world to measure oxygen concentrations. Now later what they were able is to stabilize the enzyme by immobilizing it and to date we have three different generations of these enzyme based sensors. So these sensors work with an amperometric technique. So basically what it means is that you measure the current. So the more of the glucose that's transient, the higher the current is. And actually in your glucose meter this uh, current is then converted into a concentration for you. And the advantage of using this electrochemical sensing is that it's easy to miniaturize uh, in a small device like the glucose meters, it's very reproducible and it's low cost. But let's go back to these three different uh, generations of enzyme-based sensors. The first worked on the hydrogen peroxide that was produced. And that did have the disadvantages that you were still relying on the oxygen consumption. The second relied on an additional mediator, so an additional compound that could transport the electrons to the electrode itself. So again, you needed something additional here. But the third and the final one, and this is the optimal one, because in here you don't need any other compounds, this relies on direct electron transfer between the glucose oxidase and the electrode, which is why it remains the most popular now. Unfortunately, what you can't resolve is that you will still need to have blood measurements. So there's still like a matter of it being invasive, and maybe once pricking your finger is not a big problem, but you can imagine if you continuously have to do it, it is a burden. So therefore, nowadays, these non-invasive technologies, they are becoming more and more popular. Unfortunately, they're not quite as low cost as the tests I've described in this video. So if you want to know more about bio-inspired materials, and particularly on sensing, then do have a look at the rest of our playlist. Thanks for watching.